From the score line alone, you would think that Spurs absolutely whipped these lads from Israel, all right? You would think that from a 7-2 score line. The truth is, I think that score was incredibly flattering. Not that we didn't play well, but 7-2 is like, get out of here. That's that type of score line. It wasn't that type of game. But hey, no ranger of the comic here, and we are indeed going to be discussing the Spurs game in the Europa League tonight. It was something which I was a bit concerned about, honestly. When you looked at how Spurs had played against the Macedonian side, against the Bulgarian side, I was honestly half expecting an upset. I was maybe feeling this was going to be like a 1-1, a 2-2, and it was going to go to, to extra time. But I watched some stuff about this side, and they looked like a decent side. But after watching that stuff, I did feel like we would have progressed through pretty comfortably. The 7-2, though, uh, a bit out of place. Not really what I thought would happen. Not really how I think the game really went. That, that scoreline is so incredibly inflated. <laughs> with how the game was played overall. But I suppose that is the difference when you have like high class, world class level players playing against players from a league that is probably equivalent to the championship, if not between the championship and league one. While there can be upsets, it's unlikely. Honestly, this Europa League qualification malarkey has been way, way too close for my liking. Uh, I think it showed our defensive frailties. I think it's shown that we need to really work hard to be a compact unit. When you look at the game against the Macedonian side, it really wasn't a, a pleasant one for the eye, and the Bulgarian one wasn't either. This one, at least, there were some good passages of play here. And for me, and I think every Spurs fan, Giovanni Lo Celso stood out once more and thankfully actually got on the score sheet this time round. Uh, really, really good player. He's really grown into playing a central, pivotal role for Spurs in that midfield. I think he's a nailed on starter at this point and clearly he showed the goods today. Two goals for him, a hat trick for Harry Kane. However they come or wherever they come. It is indeed a hat trick and another one for him to put on his mantelpiece, whether he'd <laughs> maybe whether it's the most exciting one or not, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, three goals are three goals. Lucas Moura got one and Delhi came on at the end for the second half and I think he played very well as well. Uh, he looked a bit lethargic, but to be fair, he hasn't been playing for a couple of weeks and with all the speculation going on, he actually had a lot of integral parts. His transition play, I thought was really good. Um, he was getting in the box from being in his own box previously, five, ten seconds earlier. So I think I think Delhi can play a very big role for Spurs. I just don't know when that time is going to come. When you look at the attacking options we have now, it's it's almost like we're spoiled for riches. We're spoiled of a lot of attacking talent. You know, you look at Kane, you look at Son, you look at Mora, you look at Bergwijn, you look at Bale, you look at Lamella, you look at Ali, you look at Lacelso. We've got so many attacking options there and only three of them can play. Maybe four if you really push it. So people are going to be left out. That's just a fact. You can't have them all playing because it will just be way too much of an unbalanced side. So I'm not sure exactly where he fits. If he fits in that number 10 role. If he fits as a floating player behind Kane where he can go left or right. But with the way Gio's playing now... It makes me question it. Should Gio be playing in that role, trying to get more goals? Because I think that's the one thing lacking in his game, and that is goals and assists. Other than that, he's played very well defensively. Last year, he improved a lot. But if you have, and this is crazy, Bale on the right, Son on the left, and Kane up top, there's one other position in the starting eleven for an attacking mid, and that's it. And there are five players vying for that one role. So there are going to be a lot of people playing back up to those front three. Imagine if we get another striker who can also play as a winger. Then we have another attacking option. I think we need to sell a couple of boys. It's not an easy thing. I mean, Lamella, obviously, it's easy. You can get out right now. Just pack your bags and leave right this moment. And then we never have to deal with it again. But it's a tough decision to make with all those other players who've had impact. You look at Mora and what he's done for the club. While he's inconsistent, he's had his, you know, life-changing moment in the Champions League semi-final. Bergwijn is new. He's only been here for a little while, but he has had an impact. I think, again, his lack of pace was shown in this game. I really don't think he is very quick. And he thinks he's very quick, which is a bit questionable. I think that is questionable. Surely he sees it in training when he's running against Mora or Son. And he's just not keeping up pace with them. Uh, surely that has to be the case. I don't know. I don't know. To this game specifically, it was a pretty good one on the eye from both sides. I think that 
both teams started well. You know, they pushed to a certain degree. Spurs got an early goal and then they equalized within about 15 minutes. <laughs> then Mora scored very quickly after that. And Gio scored two more before half time. And I think it was after that where the game was basically done because before that 20 minute point, even up to the third goal, which Gio scored, I, I would say it was in the balance. Like they were playing pretty well. They were taking a lot of long shots. I don't know why that was the case. If that was something they were told, just take pot shots because one of them clearly worked and it was an absolute banger that they scored for that first goal. Then it was 4-2, I think, because the penalty, wasn't it? Yeah. Again, Doherty, it wasn't his fault. It's just the way the European system works. I'm glad the Premier League is looking at changing the stupid handball rule, but inevitably, this is Europe, and if they're going to play by those rules, then that's just how it works. We can't change that, but what we can do is change the rule on our own soil and how it works in the Premier League and the English Football League. And maybe other systems might start adopting this type of um, level-headed approach to a handball because Matt Doherty's handball here was not a handball. It's the third penalty Spurs have been handed against them this season, wrongly. So again, it's the third wrong penalty handed and all three of them have been wrong. Then Spurs got a penalty on the other side um, where Kane slotted it away, which shouldn't have been a penalty either, in my opinion, more so than the Doherty one. But again, really, I don't think that's a penalty, the one that was given to us. So that made it 5-2. Kane then scored another one after a pretty good passage of play. It was essentially between Delhi, Bergwijn and Kane, and it was very well put together. Quick break, very good transitional play, and that was 6-2, and then Delhi got this great little piece of skill in the box. Uh, honestly, it took me back to like 2017 Delhi, 2016 Delhi. That's what I was seeing in that moment with that flash, that flash of brilliance. Absolute savage. He pantsed him pants him on a European stage. It's just crazy. I think Delhi just needs something. He clearly is confident in some ways because he was willing to take some of those absolutely insane shots, these volleys that no one in their right mind other than Kane would probably take on. But he still has that in him. He can still do it. He's still that talented guy. It's not that he can't do it. I just think Mourinho maybe he tried the soft approach and now maybe he's trying the harder approach just to see. So it's going to be it's going to be a journey to see exactly how this one plays out with Delhi because I don't want to see him go. I really don't. You can never please everyone. I don't think Delhi is going to get to those levels of scoring 20 goals, 15 goals in a season again. But I think he's someone who can chip in with 10 goals easily on a seasonally basis. Is seasonally a word? I don't know. But I think he can do it. So I think it was a good performance from the guys. I think 7-2 was very, very flattering. I think it was more like a 3-1 type of game. 3-2 maybe, 4-2. 7-2 though, they just capitulated at the end. And uh, I think the, the golf in quality really showed come the last 30 minutes. And it's never a good thing to see. You don't want to see a spanking go on on the pitch because it's never a good thing. But... Sometimes it just happens, you know, sportsmanship is one thing, but at the end of the day It's sort of unsportsmanlike if you don't try and go for every goal or assist or tackle So maybe Spurs did the right thing by pushing that far I think it was a statement from the players not that Mourinho probably wanted it to be that but Man United on the weekend Not sure how that one's gonna go really really Questioning what formation Mourinho is gonna play who's gonna be starting is Son gonna be better? Is he not gonna be better? We don't know these are all questions. We're gonna find out in two or three days It's a big one. It is a big one before the international break. So hopefully we'll get the points We've already had two points stolen from us this year. Let's see how many it's gonna to get to by the end of the season Anyway guys if you did enjoy this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel down there. If you didn't, if you didn't, then Kane himself will come after you, scoring a hat trick, doing his bits, doing the things he does, which is scoring goals, laying on assists, and he did both of those today. You don't want him coming after you, Kane, yeah. That's not a good thing. I don't want to be done for, like, uh, you know, abuse and this type of stuff, but Kane will come after you. He'll do things. You don't want that. You really don't. So just subscribe anyway to avoid that. I've been Narendra the Comic. You've been great. I'll see you next time. That's tomorrow. If you don't know, make a video every single day. Yeah, I've been doing it for over two years now. We ain't stopping till we get to 10,000 subscribers. So do subscribe. Come back again tomorrow for some more quality shitty content because we're hashtag never not here. Never not here. Never ever every single day. I think I explained all of it there. There you go. Very succinctly. So we'll move on from there. I'll see you tomorrow with some more bakwas. And if you don't know, bakwas is nonsense in Punjabi. And I do indeed. 
I do indeed upload Bakwas every single day. See you tomorrow. Skadoosh. <laughs> <laughs>